Now expected to be a Category 2 hurricane, Arthur is wrecking holiday plans from the Carolinas all the way up the coast of New York. As Arthur makes its way up the East Coast, some vacationers are planning to ride the storm out, but many others are packing up and going home. My parents are frustrated and my family's frustrated. As long as we stay away from the waves, that we should be okay. Easier said than done. Fourth of July fireworks displays have already been canceled on the Outer Banks. And in Boston, they were forced to move their holiday celebrations up a day to avoid a July 4th washout. Now the On Your Side forecast with Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval. And we look at that very latest uh, satellite radar view of Arthur. This is a Cape Hatteras right here. That eastern tip, which just sticks right out there in the ocean, makes it very difficult for these things to miss, uh, hurricanes to miss these locations. And that other point down to the south, uh, you can see the swirling in the center there. Uh, that's Wrightsville Beach getting wind gusts now to 85, 90 miles an hour. And the outer bands of this hurricane, the real core of the storm is really right around the center. It's just typical with all hurricanes. They are used to this in the mid Atlantic. They won't be sign. There'll be significant damage in some locations, but there won't be massive damage, but there's nobody around. And so the biggest damage, of course, will probably end up being uh, the fact that they will have a, a big hit on the economy. Let's hope everybody stays safe and they've evacuated these outer banks because it is a very difficult situation here. Now, I'm going to take a look at a time lapse here. I want to show you what's happening during the day today. Uh, we had clouds earlier today, but boys, we pan and look at the time lapse at the same time. Just scattered clouds now, mostly out there on the horizon. Looking at a view from Napa now to the south over the interstate. There, and you see just those scattered clouds off in the distance. Really, not much going on. The moisture and threat for thunderstorm activity is now disappearing. Bring on the sunshine. That's what's coming in now, and that will likely be with us Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as well. Very limited cloud cover, which means that searing heat will not be giving you too much relief. So the shade. You're going to have to find it under a tree somewhere. 11% humidity, very dry. Now 97 in Boise. That's the high that I expected for the day today. This may end up being the official high. It could go a little higher. The atmosphere will be a little bit hotter tomorrow. That's why I think we'll be around 100. I think between 98 and 102, depending where you are in the valley, the airport might come in at 99 or close to 100. I'm going to forecast 100, so uh, the hottest uh, 4th of July likely, again, since 2007. And this is the way the sky is going to look. Blue skies scorching in the valley, beautiful in the higher elevations. Now, take a look at this picture of Payet Lake. Look at all the folks enjoying themselves. They're actually seeking shade here because it's too warm, and we'll call it 87. A few scattered clouds over the lake, a little bit of a breeze, and a lot of boats out for the 4th of July week. And with that southerly breeze right now, it will be a very pleasant weekend in McCall. The thunderstorm threat, there's a slight chance tonight, but after tonight, that is it. It goes away and the sun comes back. 97 Boise, 106 in Vegas. The core of that heat still hanging right across southern Idaho, again from southwest Canada all the way down to uh, Vegas. Cool right along the coastline, as you'd expect, 70, 72, Seattle, Portland, respectively. But all in all, you get in inland and it is hot. Now, with the heat, the ozone levels have come up. Now, we're at a 70 today, a forecast for an 80 tomorrow. There is a burn ban in effect. You can find it where those burn, burn bans are by going to the DEQ website. We are in the moderate air quality. So nothing major, but there is a burn ban in effect, which is interesting with the 4th of July. Let's see how that works out. 97 degrees in Boise and Mountain Home, 98 in, in uh, Ontario. Thunderstorms much uh, less widespread than yesterday. A few storms north of Twin Falls and a couple near Twin with some locally gusty winds, but it won't be as bad with the gusts as we had yesterday. The drier weather is coming in from the south. We'll still have a threat for a shower or storm this evening, but the dry weather weather will win out. There's been some wind damage south of Salt Lake, but that's really been about it. No major changes there. And I think sunshine right through that upcoming weekend with that hot desert air overhead. Let's take a look at that forecast now for the Treasure Valley. And I'll go back and take a look at that Treasure Valley forecast. Here it is. Temperatures in the upper 90s to near 100. 100 Boise, 101 Mountain Home. Could be 101 on Weezer, Ontario Vale as well. Sunshine. I don't think we get the cloud cover, so it will feel even hotter during the day. 80s in Long Valley, 96 in Garden Valley in Idaho City. Lots of fireworks displays going on tomorrow night. Wind should be fairly calm. It actually be very pleasant. 80 Stanley Sun Valley. There's a nice place to go with fireworks that going on at Stanley. 97 in Twin Falls with a mixture of sunshine and a couple of clouds around. I think it'll be mostly sunny in the Magic Valley. My extended forecast: the heat will be relentless, with the coolest day being 95 on <laughs> Sunday. So we take a little bit of bite out of the heat on Sunday and Monday, and we'll be near 100. And I mean, it is just looking steady all the way at least through mid-July like this. It's a lot least. of water, a lot of shade. You got it. All right, thanks, Scott. A sharp tool is an effective tool up next before you head out and do some gardening. Jim Zanzo has some tips to make work easier and safer.